morning and welcome to CCMP. Make sure to grab a bulletin to check out all the exciting things that we have this coming week. It all starts Monday evening with Sway. Then Wednesday is our awesome hot dog lunch provided by the Classics that starts at 11. And Saturday is an exciting opportunity for CPR training. Make sure to check your bulletin for all details. Next Sunday is a super exciting service. Every praise. You ask and the praise team is going to deliver. This team is going to deliver. It's going to be a wonderful time of musical worship that you're not going to want to miss. If you are new to CCMP, welcome home. Make sure to check out the Connection Center in the back of the sanctuary. You can find out what's going on at CCMP. You can sign up for future events. There may be a free gift and they are happy to pray with you. Hey, good morning, everybody. Let's stand up and worship this morning.
Let's pray, everybody. God, we sing that song. And Lord, sometimes we just sing it as this sort of foundational truth that can run through the life of a believer, Lord. And sometimes, God, we just scream this song in defiance of what we are walking through as just this loud reminder to break through the stress and the strain of the moment, to remind us that there is so much more to life than just what we see. God, we are reminded that one day faith shall be made sight. We know, God, that it's because of the rock upon which we stand that we can say that it is well with our soul. Because there's a God in heaven who sits on a throne, and there's a Holy Spirit present with us here that wraps itself around our hearts and our lives and our minds. It carries us through the moments, Lord Jesus. Bolsters us when the wind comes against us. Protects us from the storms. Sometimes drags us through the moments of life. But always present. Always there. Always making it well. And God, we marvel at the fact that we are the people who can sing these songs we have access to this, that we are blessed beyond measure. We are not blessed because we have things, we are blessed because we have you. These songs ring just as true in a first world rich America as they do in a third world poverty stricken church sitting in the middle of a ghetto struggling to survive. That believer there and this believer here, Lord, we all sing the same songs. We stand upon the rock. And the wellness of our soul is not because of what we have done for you, it is because of what you have done for us. So God, we stake our claim on these truths. We will live with them and we will die with them. Knowing that there's a better day coming, and knowing that no ounce of suffering here is wasted. And you redeem all things. God, we pray that you would make our lives this beautiful, sweet aroma. the nostrils of every person that we come in contact with and reminds them that there is a man by the name of Jesus who lived with us, walked with us, died for us, and who got up out of the grave for us. And life without him can be empty, but life with him is so full so injected with meaning and purpose. So God, help us to live our lives in such a way that the people around us want what we have. That we as your ambassadors represent you well. That we love maliciously if need be. That we go above and beyond. That the grace and mercy that people see in us is a reflection of the grace and mercy that has been poured out on us. through it all, through it all. Amen.
You may be seated. to discover CCMP. Our time together today is designed to give you a deeper understanding and appreciation of what it means to be a member of a family and a member of a local church. You may already be a member or are thinking about church membership. We want you to have a clear understanding of what the Community Church of Mount Pleasant is all about. We are the Community Church of Mount Pleasant, a body of believers, a group of Christ followers, eager to see God's truth. We are from all walks of life and diverse backgrounds, authentic and transparent, humble and hungry. We are not concerned about externals that do not make a difference in the light of eternity. We are not bound by the traditions of men, and we are not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. We are seeking relevance in a world filled with irrelevance. We are seeking to follow the Acts 2 model of the local church assembly. And we are focused on being a healthy church body. We are committed to obeying the Great Commission of Jesus, starting in our community and then to all the world, preaching, teaching, baptizing, and making disciples, and empowering others to do the same. We are a family, one body, many members, one purpose, to love God in our heart, in our soul, and with our mind, loving others like ourselves. We are not for everyone, and that's okay. We pray for God to send exactly the right members to this body and to protect us from those that would do harm to his church family. Since 2015, we have chosen to become the hands and feet of Jesus through activities such as feeding the Mount Pleasant High School band and the football team, gathering supplies for teachers, participating in parades, hosting back to school blasts, supporting Joy Prom, and maintaining a faith and community health ministry, hosting blood drives, offering free hot dog lunches, and honoring our police, military, and first responders. Along with our visible heart of action, we are also committed to biblical order. CCMP has a constitution and bylaws that have been carefully crafted to set a biblical course of authenticity and integrity. Both are available on our website and we encourage you to check them out. We all, have a, we all have a story, and every church has a story. Every church has something that is its niche. And, what I, and when I think about it is, when I think about CCMP or when someone says, well, what kind of church is CCMP? Because some churches, their thing is worship. Well, we got worship. We're good. We got good worship. Some of it's preaching. At least when Pastor Snow's up here, we got good preaching. Some, church, some churches, it's good events, and uh, good, they're good at hosting certain events, and I think we're pretty good at that too. And some churches have amazing facilities. I think we got that too. But what's deeper and more important than any of that, and the greatest resource 
to CCMP is the people in this room. Because the beauty of the body of Christ is the fact that God desires to write his story in us and magnify it through us. That is the beauty of the body. That is what this church is here. That is what this church is meant to do. And its greatest resource will always be the story that God is writing through the people that he brings here. And so I don't know what journey you're on, but CCMP is on a journey. And we're honored that you would be here. And so with that, I want to share a little bit of that journey that we've been on up until this point. So thank you for being here. And I hope you're blessed by what comes next. Since 2015, CCMP has been on an incredible journey. Some in this room were with us when CCMP was only a prayer and plea for God's direction around a fire pit. Some of you in this room are new to this body and perhaps seeking God's direction for you. Wherever you are in this journey, you are welcome here. God is writing our story, even today, and we invite you to be part of what he is doing. We also invite you to take a look into where our story began so that you can also appreciate what God has done in the story of CCMP. Like Todd said, CCMP was birthed around a fire pit with a small group of committed believers. Our origins are humble. A converted horse barn, dirt floors, blue jeans, dogs around a pot-bellied stove, and a solid biblical teaching. God knew we would outgrow that building, so he allowed circumstances that pushed us into the cafeteria of Mount Pleasant Elementary School. Despite fears that what made us CCMP would disappear as we grew and changed locations, God taught us a very valuable lesson about our identity. He was with us in the barn he converted to a church. He was with us in the school cafeteria. He converted to a church. And he is with us now in a mill that you guessed it. He converted to a church. You see, we lost nothing when we moved locations except a building. And he showed us that church is not a building. It is not the walls. It is wherever God is with his people. During the pandemic, God stretched our vision even further and challenged us to seek his people by streaming our services. We realized that he was calling us to reach out to those who were not with us physically, but seeking a connection. We obediently answered the call, and now we have a very active online presence with hundreds of views weekly. And here we are today with you, seeking his direction for our next steps. Part of the way he guides us is through providing strong, godly leadership. Cecil Moore oversees our general grounds and operations as well as facilitating our supply inventory. And if you're looking for him, he can usually be found on a softball field. Stephanie Burris is our administrative assistant. She takes care of accounts payable and receivable, filing and building access. Stephanie also facilitates correspondence and helps maintain our social media accounts. Stephanie Leonard is our Kid Men Director. She communicates and directs Kid Ministry volunteers for seven different classes in a Christ-centered curriculum that is provided and planned by Mary Snow. 
She plans and implements events such as VBS and Sunday Fun Days. In addition to all that, she works hard each week to prepare a welcome, engaging, and exciting, clean and festive environment in the Kidman building. Robert and Joy Whitley oversee the worship ministry in its many layers. Music, visuals, videos, instruments, and supporting the pastor and the production team. Robert and Joy design, organize, lead, and participate in the worship experience each week. They also maintain the church calendar and promote upcoming events. Jason Shive serves as assistant pastor at CCMP. God called Jason and his wife Amanda all the way from China where they were serving as missionaries and brought them to us as CCMP. Jason assists with all pastoral responsibilities of shepherding, discipling, preaching, and the daily administration of CCMP. In their free time, Jason and Amanda are also very active in the CCMP student ministry, The Tribe. And then there is Pastor David Snow. He is our seasoned shepherd who has served in most every pastoral capacity imaginable. Some know him as pastor. Some know him as coach. Many know him as friend. But all know him and his wife Mary to be servants of God called to lead CCMP with wisdom, passion, and discernment. Welcome CCMP family to every single one of you that is here with us in person and to our growing online viewership. You are here with us today. And whether you're here face to face or watching online, you have just seen an incredible representation of who we are in our story. You know, our stories, they reveal our heart who we are at the core, at our essence. Good stewards pay attention to the narrative of changed lives. But good stewards pay attention to something else. We pay attention to the big picture, the numbers. Now I know that numbers and statistics may seem like they paint a dry, maybe black and white, representation of what is happening at our church. But that's not it at all. The numbers and the stats that you are about to see are all from 2021. They're not dry and they're not black and white. They paint a very real, living, full color picture of what God is doing in our lives. So these 2021 statistics, they tell the story of things like attendance and our ministry teams and activities. They also tell about our finances. But let me tell you what they really do. They tell a story of what God is doing at the heart of CCMP. It's all about what he is doing. From that simmering bonfire around a fire pit to now this blazing inferno of activity. He is at work, and we welcome you to see that promise, what he has done in 2021, and the promise of what he is doing in 2022, and the incredible promise of what he continues to want to do here in the lives of all of us at CCMP. So buckle up. You're about to see what God has done and what God can do.
you know, as I, I watch all of those, look through those, listen to those, watch the numbers, watch the faces, uh, in my heart, I'm just, I'm overwhelmed. Um, because I have to, to make sure and say this to you, uh, for all of that, to God be the glory. To God be the glory. We, we don't take any of his glory. None of that is about us. It all affects us. But it's how God builds his church. Do you know that we're told in the scriptures that God is going to build his church. God is building his church. God is going to build his church with or without me. God's going to build his church with or without you. We just get to get in on that. Be a part of that. And so I, I know perhaps that was a little bit overwhelming. Uh, and, and I need to remind you of this. All of, all of that, all of the numbers and the stats and the uh, events, all of that is from 2021. That is at the end of the year, we compile all of that and look back and say, look what God has done this year. And so at the end of 2022, we will capture as best we can what God is doing and what God has done this year, and we'll present that to you next year. But it's, it, and, I, and I have to say this, um, a lot of those numbers, in fact, most all of the numbers that you saw in that State of the Union address have doubled in 2022. If you, if you looked at those numbers, you know the attendance, uh, 200, 300, 400. Two of the last four Sundays, we have been over 700 in attendance. And, and that's not to, you know, I, I, I'm not tooting our own horn about that. Um, our income, every aspect, all of the numbers have accelerated because God is building his church. That's what he does. Um, God is writing his story. And we're here because obviously we're a part of that story. One of our core colors from the beginning is, is green. Green is symbolic of, of lots of things, of life. It is also symbolic of growth. And, and I, know, I know there's some apprehension sometimes when we talk about church and growth. I understand that because we, we have a tendency to get comfortable, right? We get in our place and we, we, we get our little nest and we get comfortable with that. And we don't want to be caused to be uncomfortable. Well, we believe that God is not only building his church, we believe that he's growing his church. Let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. Are you growing today? Think about that. Are you growing? Are you growing financially? Are you growing socially? Are you growing spiritually or have you settled into your little nest and you're like, don't bother me, I'm good. Because we have a tendency to do that. So I, I want to talk to you for a minute as we begin to near the end of our presentation today. I want you to know what CCMP is all about. I want you to know what we believe what we think, what's our vision, what's our purpose, where do we come from, where are we going? You need to know that. We have no hidden agendas here in this place. There's nothing going on under the table. And today, we want to just open up our hearts and let you see inside and see who we are. We started this church in the barn, and it was small, and it was very humble. Uh, I would look at my wife as we would drive out here and walk into the barn at that time, which was a dirt floor, and two of my most faithful attenders were dogs. And they would wander in and get comfortable in front of the podium, often fall asleep, uh, like a good deacon would do. But um, we had those kind of humble beginnings. And, and we, I've been in the ministry a long time. And I've learned a lot, perhaps more from, from man's failures than from man's successes. And I said, God, teach us. Teach us how to build a church. Teach us how to, to, to move out of your way and let you build a church. And we went to Acts chapter 2 because Acts chapter 2 is the model church. It's the first church. It's a template 
and I encourage you to go there. Go to Acts 2, specifically verses 41 through 47. Those, those characteristics are on our wall back there because that's where it all started. It talks about what it means to be a church member. It talks about the traits and characteristics of a church, the beginning church, the first church, the real church. And, and we all kind of came before the Lord and say, you know, we've all been to church. We grew up in church. But what does God really want a church to be? And we erased the board. And we didn't have any sacred cows, which was really nice. And we didn't have any, any, any things to say, well, we ain't never done it that way. Because we ain't never done it anyway here. We in a barn with nobody but dogs. So we were in a great place to ask God, what does a church look like? And Acts chapter 2, as you're going to read and find out for yourself, verse 41, the first thing it says about that church is that God added to the church daily. The church began to grow. Now, it grew spiritually. It grew into discipleships. It grew into relationships. And it grew numerically. In fact, verse 41 says, in that one day there were added 3,000 souls. And that was a jolt. Because some of us are kind of like, well, you know, Pastor, I like my little church where we all know each other and we, we pat each other on the back and tell us how good we are. 3,000! Well, that blows that concept that your church has to be small to be spiritual because God is about green. And I'm not talking about the money kind. He's talking about growth. Acts chapter 2. So we said, Lord, how do we... How do we do that? So we read verses 42 through 47, and he started to begin to tell us how to grow. Now, at this church, we believe God has led us to this place. Um, many churches have a vision, and that's everyone, every church is different. Every church has a personality, and we're not supposed to be like anybody else's church. I want you to know we're not trying to be like anybody else except Jesus. That's all we care. That's the model we want to follow. We're not in competition with anybody else's church. You see, those other churches are not our enemies. The devil is our enemy. They're our teammates. They're our partners. They have different outposts than we do, but we're on the same. Does that make sense? Is everybody with me? Sometimes things go without saying, and I just like to go ahead and say it. So we began to wonder, what does God want us to be? Well, this church is an evangelistic church. This church is a discipling church. This church is a missions church. This church has a great kids ministry. Great. Guess what God wants us to do? Acts chapter 2 says God wants us to be a healthy church. Hmm. I know that's a new concept for some of you. Those of you who have children. And you feed your children. And your children run around and go outside and act crazy and exercise. And, and all of a sudden you notice that their pants are getting too short. And they're outgrowing their clothes. What's happening to your children? They're growing. You don't have to sit down in front of your children and say, Okay, little Johnny, I want you to grow today. Please grow. Please grow, little Johnny. Guess what's going to happen to little Johnny if he's healthy? He's going to grow. And, and this concept just hit me in the face in Acts chapter 2. How about let's have a healthy church and if we're a healthy church, we will, we can't help but grow. And so, folks, if we're healthy, we're not going to stop it because your kids are going to grow. Now, back to Acts 2. As we pursue the foundation of that first church, there are two clear elements. Clear elements. One foundational truth of the church is truth. Truth. The church is built on the truth of God and God's word. Truth. 
You don't build a church on current events or opinions or the pastoral twist. You build a church by opening God's word every Sunday and teaching the Bible. Truth. You feed your kids junk food and they're not going to be healthy. In fact, they're going to get unhealthy. You feed your kids good food and they're going to grow and be strong. You feed the church the word of God and we'll be strong and we'll grow. But that's not all. The other foundational element of a true church is love. Truth and love. Watch this. But like many things in the scriptures, there needs to be a balance. You see, if there's an imbalance, we don't be help, we're not healthy. A church with all truth, all truth, boy, they teach the truth, preach the truth, holler the truth, judge the truth, no love. Where's that go? Judgmental, mean spirited, and they preaching mad, and they're beating you over the head with the Bible. All truth, no love. Uh-uh. How about we go over here? Let's just love everybody. Let's just love, 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 love. No truth. That's just as wrong. And that ends up as just as unhealthy. Acts 2, truth and love. As you begin to grow, and that's your core, the church organically grows. That's how God has designed the local church. So I, I need for you to know that's who we are. Sunday morning is like the tip of an iceberg. There's so much more depth that goes on all week long in this place with these people. And I want to close by doing this. I love this song that we heard this morning. Is it well? I want to ask you that question. Is it well with your soul today? And that starts with the personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Nothing else will substitute for a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Oh, preacher, I want to join your church. Okay, great, but not yet. I just, we need to make sure you know Jesus because God help us to never allow anyone to join our church and go to hell because they don't know Jesus. You need to know that about our church. Well, don't you want us to join your church? Oh, of course I do. But make sure you know Jesus first. That's where it all begins. Is that your next step? Don't miss that one. In your bulletin, there's this page. And this page is about your next step. Perhaps you've been attending, watching, learning, growing, curious. Who is this church? Who is this guy? Well, I think God's leading me here. There's a place here that says, yes, my next step is to be a member. You take that back to the connection desk, and you get information from them if you have questions, and that perhaps is your next, perhaps your next, perhaps you're not ready for that. Perhaps your next step is baptism, which we're going to do in June. Perhaps your next step is to get in a Bible study group and begin to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. Whatever it is, are you growing today? It all starts with a choice, and that choice Nobody can make it for you but you. And I'm posing you with that choice today. I want you to know here at this church, we love you. In fact, we love you and there ain't nothing you can do about it. That's just the way it's going to be. We're going to desire to give you truth, give you love. And today, we wanted you to learn more about who we are. Thank you for being here today. And we hope you'll enjoy the rest of our presentation. Now that you know a little bit about our leadership and what to expect from us as a community of believers, we want to leave you with some final thoughts about becoming a part of any church, not just CCMP. We believe. There is a big difference between being a Christian and just being a church member. A Christian commits his life to Christ. A church member commits his life to other Christians. 
If you choose to join CCMP, we think it's fair to tell you that we have some expectations. We call them the I Wills. I will protect the unity of the church by maintaining a loving attitude towards all by dealing openly and positively with conflict and by following the leadership of the church. I will share the responsibility of the church by praying for my church, inviting others to attend and participate, welcoming others. I will serve in the church by discovering my spiritual giftedness, developing a servant's heart, discovering a Timothy, discovering a Paul. I will support the church by attending faithfully, by representing my church in the community, by giving generously and cheerfully as the Lord leads and provides. I hope you enjoyed that. I really connect with, you can come on up, Hunter. I, I really connect with the whole idea of if you feed your kids good food, they're going to grow. And sometimes the, pants get sometimes the pants get shorter and more of their legs shows. I I'm that parent that tries to put the short pants. I'm like, he can wear high waders. He's fine. And then, I'm, then Amanda will see what he's wearing and say, nope, uh -uh, he's changing clothes. And but that's me. But I love that analogy because I believe that because that's where we are today. That's where we are today. Uh, we've, continued to, we've continued to grow. Praise the Lord. We're not apologetic about that because we want to, above all, we want to be healthy. And so a part of that is what we get to do today. And so if you're a visitor and wondering what we're doing now, it's we are transitioning to a time where on a few key issues, we, all, we will vote on those issues as a body of believers. And so we have some information inside the bulletin that hopefully you've had a chance to look at. You can check it out on the website, the app. But we've, we have found a piece of property that we have felt like this, it, this fits our next step as a church. But it's the church's job to make that decision. And so I wanted to bring my wonderful assistant, Hunter, up here to help us through that last little bit. All right. How about timing on having Discover the day that we vote on this? I mean, all of it's in God's hands, but what about that? The timing, to see all those numbers and then to realize what we're looking for and what we need to have our eyes open to. I um, want to start by saying something that Lee brought up in the last uh, service. She mentioned that this is not a decision for the growth team. It's not a decision for the leadership. This is a decision for the entire church. And so it's the responsibility of each of us to ask those questions and to get the information that we need. And if you identify a problem, identify a solution. And let's all move together. Let's all move together on this. So uh, to reiterate what Jason said, the information is online. It's on the app. He sent out some notifications yesterday. It's very important that you familiarize yourself with that, I believe. And uh, then also we've handed out some things today. This is as much information as we have been able to obtain and it is as, it, as organized as we could possibly get it. I want to apologize for how small the font is. I'm sorry. But if you go home and you pull up your, uh, your microscope and read through all of that and have questions, the, discover, or the growth team is going to be here to answer those for you. All right, so we're passing out the crayons for the vote. As you all know, that's how we roll here. Uh, this is for members. If you are a member, you are welcome to vote. Um, by writing a yes or no on the ballot and putting it back in the bucket. So we're going to take some time to do that. Um, as you're making sure all, every, if, if you, 
If you're not seeing a bucket come your way, go ahead and raise your hand so we can make sure we get them in your direction. I'm not as eloquent as, um, as Lee is, so you all missed out on the best part of, of today. She had the first service. Usually I'm in first service. Last time I asked Lee, I said, how did I do? And she said, you did great. You need to smile. And, and I told Abby that afterwards. And you know what she said? No one expected you to be the personality of the group anyways. <laughs> so here we are. Thank you. All right. So how is it going? Yeah, that'd be great. All right. Awesome. Guys, give Hunter a hand. Give Hunter a hand. Hunter, I did tell Abby, I was like, man, this is, he's doing good. He's doing good. Thank you, though. Thank you, thank you, though. If y'all, if y'all are visiting, I appreciate it. But this is a part of it. And so it's good that I think you, we get to see the whole picture and not just a little bit. But as, as, you finish, as you finish that out and put it back in, I'm going to close this day in a word of prayer. And we're just excited and thankful that you were able to be with us today. Let's pray. Father, we're here. We are always on the edge of the next great decision that we have to make. Sometimes those decisions to some seem insignificant. And sometimes those decisions look like giants in front of us. But, here, but the beauty of it is it's always impactful and significant when you're in the middle of it. And so, Father, whatever the next steps are for us as individuals, Father, would you give us the wisdom to be able to step into that with confidence, surrounded and fueled by the faith of Jesus Christ. Father, as a, as a church family, would you give us the same audacious and bold faith to step into what you have? Father, as a united group, as a united family, we're in this together because we wanna give you glory and you get the most glory when we operate as a united front. And so, Father, we love you, we praise you, and we are so excited and expectant about what you have next. And so thank you in your son's holy and precious name, amen. Have an amazing week. You are. Make sure, okay, make sure you got everything in there. Make sure you turn your vote in, but you are dismissed. Thank you.